All right, so what we have here is a input-output model where we have two basic commodities, steel and lumber, and they're kind of codependent on each other, meaning that they not only depend on themselves for production, but they depend on each other for production. So what we want to do is figure out, to meet this external demand of 16 units of steel and 8 units of lumber, how much do I need to input into the system? And naturally, that number is going to be more than 16 and 8 because you want 16 and 8 to come out. So remember how this all works. We need to come up with a matrix A. Now, your book calls it a production matrix. I like to call it a consumption matrix, or it's sometimes called a technology matrix. It's basically the matrix that controls how much of the technology is required to use, to produce. So since we have steel and lumber, I'm going to put S and T, and I keep wanting to put T, S and L here, and S and L here. And from the left we go from, and to the right we go to, and this is how we set it up. So, it takes 0.1 units of steel and 0.5 units of lumber to make a unit of steel, which means 0.1 units of steel go to steel, and 0.5 units of lumber go to steel. Same thing on the other side, it takes 0.2 units of steel and no units of lumber to make lumber, so that means this is 0.2 and zero. So, we know that our solution, x, is identity minus a inverse times d. Okay, so we can do this by hand if we want to. In fact, I will just to illustrate that it can be done. It's a little tedious. And then we'll go right to the technology. So I remember is the identity matrix that has the prescribed dimension. In this case, it's two by two. And we're gonna take away our a. And that's going to give us, let's see, 1 minus 0.1 is 0.9. One, uh, 0 minus 0.2 is neg negative 0 0.2. 0 minus 0 0.5 is negative 0.5. And 1 minus 0 is 1. So there we go. So then I minus A inverse, remember the inverse of a 2 by 2 is that shortcut formula. 1 over 0.9 times 1 minus negative 0.2 times negative 0.5. And then what we do is we interchange the main diagonal elements and then we negate the other elements. So simplifying that a little bit, so let's see, 0.9 times one is 0.9. This here is 0.1, so we have one over 0.8 times this matrix. So then I minus A inverse times D is just this whole thing written down again. I'm going to leave the 1 over 0.8 outside. And it was 16 and 8 that we desire. So multiplying matrices. 1 times 16 is 16. 0.2 times 8 is 1.6. 0.5 times 16 is 8, and 0.9 times 8 is 7.2. And that gives us this. And if we divide everything through by 0.8, that gives us 22 and 19. So that worked out pretty well. So how do we use the technology to get this result? Well, here we go. So I'm going to go to the graphing calculator. Whoop. And I'm going to clear all that out. I'm going to go to the matrix menu. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my matrix A into a two by two. You see, I was doing other problems earlier. My matrix is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0. This is why I always push writing it down first. That way you can see what you're putting into the calculator. And then I'm going to go back to the matrix menu. And I'm just going to use D because it's the same letter. It's just nice to use the same symbols when we can. So that's a two by one. And my demand matrix is 16 in the first entry, eight in the second. And now we're just a couple keystrokes away from getting the answer. So second and quit. I'm going to use a parenthesis because I'm taking the inverse of a complicated expression. So I want to make sure that all winds up in parentheses. So I'm going to go to... I need the identity matrix. I'm going to go to the matrix menu and math. And notice that number five here is identity. And I want the two-dimensional identity. So I'm going to put two in parentheses there. 
and then I'm going to subtract matrix A, and then I'm going to take the inverse after I close off the parentheses, and then while I'm at it, I'm going to multiply it by D. And what are we hoping for? 22, 19. Boom, there it is. So as long as you set everything up appropriately, using the technology is not that bad. It's just a little bit tedious to put in the identity matrix. Um, you can form a matrix that is the identity minus A already computed. If you don't like using the identity function, it takes a little bit more time, but at least it works out. Um, but there you go. There is how we use technology and how to solve an input output problem. Come back for a three by three. It'll be great fun.